welcoming to the stage our third speaker, Sandy Hansen Wolf, uh, who owns and operates Ag Venture Feeds in Watkins, Minnesota, and is a consultant and speaker to a wide variety of audiences locally and nationally. Sandy uh, began her speaking and consulting work as a result of her own experience of being thrust into entrepreneurship in 2003 when her young husband of one year died of leukemia. Although always an entrepreneur at heart in her childhood and previous careers, she has, le uh, she has um, left to manage the ownership and management of her late husband's feed company, Ag Venture Feed and Seed Incorporated, and then uh, in uh, a the then insurance agent took over these responsibilities, although she knew very little about the feed business. Sandy was determined to keep the business going uh, despite industry pressures and challenges with the business that was near bankruptcy. More than a decade later, Sandy remains as the owner of Ag Venture, a now thriving business that has grown exponentially while she also shares her passion and expertise through her speaking and consulting work. Sandy's talk rep represents the economic pillar and is titled Growing Against the Grain. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Sandy Hansen Wolf. Good morning. Every day I go to work as the solo owner of Egg Venture. When people ask what I do, I tell them, I own a feed and seed business. And some look kind of surprised, and many throughout the last decade have kind of gone silent and have looked at me with a weird look. And what they say next is kind of surprising, and it used to be offensive, but not anymore. What they say is, uh, you know, you don't look like a feed lady. You know, and, and again, that used to offend me. And then I started thinking about it, and I had to switch my mindset, and I had to switch the train of thought that I was on, and I had to make a choice of how to use that differently. And so I started thinking, when they say that, what are they really thinking? And if you think about it in your own mind, as in my own, I have an idea of what a woman in agriculture on a farm is supposed to look like. And so I went searching for that. And if you can create that in your own mind, I have a feeling that this is what you're going to come up with. <laughs> and so instead of getting offended, I now say, thank you. I never really want to look like that in the first place. But sometimes we're thrust into positions in innovation in our businesses, in our lives, that we're not prepared for. And so about 12 years ago, I had a choice. I had tough decisions to make, and I chose to stay in the business that my, my late husband and the husband of one year had left behind for me, in an industry called agriculture, an awesome, dynamic, and growing industry. And it was back then that I decided, well, number one, we were almost broke, so I didn't think it was a great thing then, but when you're almost broke, you really have nothing to lose. So the fear of failure is just right there. And so, you know what, uh, there's something to be said about trying when, when you have nothing to lose. And it also made me examine my old beliefs and my old mindsets and also the old ways of doing things in a very, very old industry of agriculture. Now, in uh, the year 2015, there's many more women than there was even 12 years ago in agriculture. There were many times I went to a meeting and I was the only woman in the room. Uh, so to say the stacks were, uh, the chips were stacked against me was definitely a real thing, and I agreed. Uh, there were many times back then, and still sometimes now, and I believe this is where innovation always starts, is when people told me this phrase, it can't be done. There was a part of my mind that thought, yes, they are right, and they are probably right, and I will probably die trying, but again, I have nothing to lose. But as an entrepreneur, or the entrepreneur inside all of us, I think this is an awesome call to action. It can't be done. It's a great way to start, and Tane had alluded to that in our earlier presentation. So I think making going and growing against the grain is a reality, and it becomes a norm. And so I have the privilege now, 12 years later, to still work within a great, dynamic, and fascinating industry of agriculture. And so what, what are we doing in agriculture? And just a real quick snapshot. Uh, in central Minnesota, I thought I'd start with some statistics. In, this is Stearns and Benton County alone. 
uh, the number of acres under agriculture in farming is near a, a million. 946, 372 acres, representing 4,459 4, farms of all sizes. Not just big farms, but farms of all sizes. Hobby farms, family farms, and absolutely corporate farms. One billion, uh, this number surprised me, for just Stearns and Benton County, one billion represents the amount of economic impact for this area alone. Uh, there, aren't many, there aren't many or probably no farmers sitting around today. It's, uh, it's something that we, we're, we're kind of a silent industry, but it's a huge industry. And if there are opportunities to be had in agriculture, it is in central Minnesota, with Stearns County being the number one dairy county in the state. So here are some of the cool innovations that have come, up, come around in the last decade that I've been in agriculture. Robotic dairies. We're all struggling with talent, and dairies have experienced this for quite some time. And some of the farmers have decided that they needed to take technological advances to make their operations work. And so we've got robotic dairies. And just, just a side note, cows like to be milked. It, it hurts when they don't get milked. So they go into this holding pattern, they get, they, if you see there's a little trough up there, they get fed while they're milked with a very sweet candy-like feed, which entices them in. And then there's a robotic arm, as you can see in the little inset, that does all the work that a human being used to do. And this isn't to displace people, it's because we cannot find enough people to staff our dairies. Uh, secondly, cow tags. This is a really cool thing. The tag that you see around the neck, the little green thing, is is a link to a computer. And what that tells you is basically every single thing about that cow. And so the farm manager can look on their computer screen and see exactly what that cow's health is, what the temperature is, when they got milked, how much they got milked, what they ate, how much, when they slept, and so on. So perfect optimal health is exactly what we're looking for because precision is a part of our industry. Uh, Agriculture has been a commodity-based business for a long, long time, for many, many, many decades. And many of these innovations have come out of that need to innovate around that. As you all know in your own industries, once you become a commodity, you absolutely have to find creative and innovative solutions to get things done. Uh, along with the cow tags uh, and related, the drone. I, I saw the little video that we had on the, the drone. Drones aren't just used for spying. Agriculture uses them quite frequently, sometimes to get an overview of the farm, but a lot of times in crop management, uh, so that we're not taking equipment and going over crops. We are now just going on a, basically and literally, on a sky-high view of what's going on in each farm. And very coolly, when, when I was in... Uh, when, when I, I grew up on a farm, and we didn't do any of this. You know, what you planted is what you got, and hopefully it was good type of thing. And it was a little more technological than that. But now every single section of land is monitored for the soil basis, and um, nutrients are applied, again, in precision, because there is no room for waste. Uh, going along with that, inside of our equipment, our tractors, our harvesting equipment, and so on, is way more technology than I know what to do with. But it's pretty cool. Tractors now drive themselves because they want to stay on the same path so that you're looking at less soil compaction in, on the land. Also, seed is applied exactly to that little section of land as you're going across the field so that there is no waste. Uh, also, when we're harvesting, we're using this to, to know exactly the yield per square foot, basically, of the field so that we know exactly what we're getting and there is no waste and no repetition on what we're doing. Uh, lastly, uh, this is a feed tag from one of our dairies that we do, and this is basically the recipe for optimal nutrition. I always, I always think about this every time I see a feed tag come across our desk, and, and thankfully we have many. And what's happening here is that cows are fed the exact nutrition that they need to thrive. If only I could eat that well. If you look, it's the exact protein, it's the exact minerals, it's the exact uh, phosphorus and all of those levels so that they perform at the optimal level. And again, using our resources wise, wisely. So the outcome of all of this is that we are trying in agriculture, no matter what you're hearing and so on, to safely 
and effectively feed the world's growing population. And that is a privilege that we take very humbly and very sincerely. So what have we learned from all this, or how can you take that home to your business? I think there is a call to action here, and as Tane had referred to, uh, sometimes it is, does take thinking outside the box and going against the grain. And I think instead of, a, a lot of times we stall out or we stop doing what we're supposed to do because we have a great idea and someone says to you, why are you going to do that? That's stupid, that's dumb, that will never work. Again, here's my, two of my favorite things that I like to think. Instead of asking why, ask why not? What is it going to take to make this work? What is it in it? What, what's in it for us? Why not do it? There's so many things that we did differently at first, and probably because I didn't know how we were supposed to do it in the first place, but it served us kind of well because it helped us come up with a brand new business model that seemed crazy, ridiculous, and basically out of my mind and out of everybody else's opinions, mine too, that thought this would never ever work. But it happens to have worked fairly well, at least up until now. And every entrepreneur sitting in the room sits every day with the thought that we may fail in the future. That is a very real and, and sincere thing that we think. We will try our best, but we may fear, fear, fail in the future. And so what I invite you to do is think about people in your history. And one of my favorites is this guy right here. He looked crazy, he looked ridiculous. He had thoughts, he had dreams, he had everything in his mind, and he made great things happen. So don't be afraid to be crazy, ridiculous, a little different. I think that's what it's gonna take to be innovative in our businesses now and going into the future. And so when you put intuition, when you put a crazy vision, when you put everything else, strategy, everything that you need to make things happen in your business, it is absolutely a magical combination. And so lastly, what I would like to do is give you this. You are invited. Our farmers want you to come out and see our industry. It is very fascinating. It's hard to, to tell you about in 10 minutes. And it's the super cool tour that you will never forget. So. We are always available to show you exactly the beauty of agriculture that's going on in central Minnesota. Come by yourself. Come, come with a bus. We can handle you. We can drive you right through a big dairy and show you how cool it is and how well we're treating our animals. And so in conclusion, I think it's quite simple. Keep going and growing against the grain. It's where magical things happen.